It is April 1st and Financial Literacy Month. Uh, before we get into that, we got a good week for you here this week. We've got consumers clearly feeling very good, uh, maybe a result of some spring sunshine and vaccines kind of getting pushed out. Uh, and the S&P hit 4,000 today, Thursday, April 1st, S&P hit 4,000 for the first time. Uh, my name is Brandon Steele, financial advisor with Mainsail Financial Group here in Bellevue. And our goal here each week is just bring you some of the high level news and trends that we are watching in the markets. Uh, hopefully kind of weed out all the stuff that that's on the, the media every day and bring you the stuff that, that really matters. Um, so as you can see here in, in Seattle, the, the weather is getting a little bit nicer. Um, actually finally starting to get out a little bit for some spring golf and it has been hard to shake the rust off. But I think it has meant good things as far as uh, consumers, as far as the market goes. Um, I'll kind of jump right into it and start out real quick, touching on a number that came out on Tuesday. Uh, consumer confidence came out really, really strong. In fact, it was kind of the talk of the day in the uh, financial media. So it's a very good sign. And I'm assuming it's probably because we're getting back out there. Um, I'm sure the weather may have something to do with it. Uh, but also vaccines are, are really starting to work their way through the system. And so I am sure that that is really what's driving a lot of that confidence. But nonetheless, it's really good to see that and something that you know may drive things further still. Uh, last week, I want to back up here a little bit before we get too far into what's going on here this week, because Friday we had some really important numbers come out. So that's all good on the consumer confidence side of things. However, not to, uh, <laughs> to rain on the parade here, but last Friday we had some pretty bad numbers come out. Personal income was actually down just a little over 7%. Uh, consumer spending was down about a percent. And this is not necessarily good or bad, but core inflation came out at about 0.1% as well. So all of these things were in line with expectations for the most part, but it's not good to see spending and, and income down, uh, which will tie into jobs numbers we'll get to here in a little bit. So hopefully that picks up as we look forward. Uh, you know, maybe the stimulus will help drive some more spending as well, but certainly don't want to see those numbers drop too far. Bouncing forward to the jobs numbers, uh, for those who watched, joined us last week, this, this week was pretty, was and still will be tomorrow important on the jobs front. On Wednesday, we had ADP employment report come out and it looks like we added 517,000 jobs in the month, month of March. Uh, it's great, um, huge, huge jump from where we were in the month of February, which was only about 176,000, if I remember right, something right around there anyway. So a huge jump in jobs getting, you know, people getting back to work. Uh, it's probably a result of, you know, some of the states kind of opening back up. Um, but, you know, as numbers are picking back up here again, it will be interesting to see what happens if states start to restrict a little bit more or kind of pull back on some of the, um, you know, on some of the, the opening that has been done, that may also have a little bit of an impact on jobs. And in fact, today we had in a, the initial jobless claims numbers come out and we lost, basically the initial jobless claims were about 719,000. So maybe this is a sign of some of that already happening. I, I, I don't know for sure, but that number is not good. You know, the, the bigger monthly number was great to see all those jobs being added. But then we look at this weekly number and uh, hopefully that is not a trend. Hopefully that's kind of a one-off situation here. You know, before this, we were kind of dropping back down a little bit. We haven't been in the 700s for about a month or so. Um, so hopefully this is just a one-off kind of data point. We'll get back to normal here next week, but definitely, definitely something to watch. Uh, you know, and, and with all this going on, it was a great day in the market, a great week in the markets. Uh, the S&P actually closed at a record high 4,000. So big, you know, big kind of milestone number to hit, um, but certainly really, really important to watch what happens here in the, the coming months. You know, on top of that, we've got some of this other bigger picture stuff going on. We've got Biden uh, looking to pass a, about a two and a half trillion infrastructure plan. Um, obviously, in the short run, that may be more jobs, more everything, but certainly want to look at the long-term impacts as well. Uh, and then we had this uh, Suez Canal ship that had been blocking uh, blocking things for, I think it was 
about a week or two. So that was kind of interesting. That's been cleared now. So good news, nothing more to worry about there. You know, there is some financial damage, but I don't think it's necessarily anything to, uh, to be too concerned about now that it has been cleared and, and things are back up and running. All right, so as we look forward, moving into next week, uh, first off, tomorrow is Friday. Friday, the markets are closed for Good Friday, um, but there are still some really big numbers coming out, actually, which is kind of atypical. So on Friday, we've got uh, the markets closed, but we have non-farm payrolls and unemployment rates coming out. So that'll be really important to watch tomorrow. And then next week on Wednesday, uh, we have some of the Fed minutes from their meeting coming out. So see if there's anything within there that, that may be worth touching on as well. Uh, with that, again, as I mentioned, this is Financial Awareness Month. We're officially in April, Financial Awareness, Financial Literacy Month. And uh, for those who are not aware, I am very excited to announce the book is released. It is out there. Uh, and for all month to celebrate Financial Awareness Month, we're giving away free copies to anybody who wants to claim it. So please do reach out to us or um, you know, check out our website to claim your free copy. We'd be more than happy to send you that and hopefully build this financial awareness and do you know, this is kind of our idea of what we can do to try and build that out here in our community. So I uh, really appreciate everybody's support on that so far and uh, certainly happy to get you a copy if you want one. So let's move into the question of the week here this week. Uh, speaking of Financial Awareness Month, what we thought would be good is just to back up a little bit, talk about something very, very conceptual, very, very basic, which is this topic of good debt and bad debt. Um, I think especially now with interest rates really, really low, this is something we have a lot of questions about, get a lot of questions about, and something that's on a lot of folks' mind. So let's kind of break this out a little bit here. So when we talk about good debt and bad debt, what does that mean? And what I might suggest is that there's really two, uh, there's really maybe one way to differentiate the two. The way I might help put that in perspective is good debt might be anything that gets you further ahead financially. So maybe to give you some examples, um, you know, if we look at student loans, for instance, some people may be laughing as I say this, but maybe that's an example of good debt, right? The idea anyways, behind a student loan is we take debt on to hopefully further our careers and further our financial uh, prospects as we move forward. Another example may be a home purchase, right? We may take on debt with the idea of building an asset. Now, the, the interest rate you receive on some of this may also play a factor. Right now with interest rates so low, you know, uh, home debt, uh, student loan debt, these types of things, I mean, we're really not paying a whole lot of interest to, to, to build this debt. And so that may be considered good debt as well. On the flip side, we have bad debt. So let's use that same definition. Bad debt might be anything that does not further us financially. Good example, maybe putting that, uh, you know, that TV at Best Buy on the credit card, right? That's not going to help you move ahead financially unless there's some creative way to, to say that's the case. Maybe watching these uh, on YouTube. But for the most part, it's not going to move you forward financially, right? Um, let's call it any, you know, credit card debt, anything along those lines. Another factor may also be your interest rate, right? If you're paying 10 plus percent, 20 percent on a credit card, it's hard to justify that that might be good debt if you're going to keep it around for a while. Now, I think one that kind of is hard to define is, let's say, maybe a, a loan on a car, right? Is that good debt or bad debt? Well, it depends a little bit, like everything in planning. And maybe a good example is good debt might be a Honda Civic, right? Honda Civic may be able to get you to your job and further you financially, whereas maybe bad debt is like that Ferrari loan, right? Maybe you don't necessarily need that. Uh, you know, you could probably get to work in a, in a much more realistic car than, than um, the debt it would take to take that on. So hopefully that's some good examples. Um, I thought this would be a really good start for Financial Awareness Month. We're really excited at what we're doing around that for the community. Again, the book is part of it. We're also going to have a podcast here soon. Um, touch, touching on how to kind of help educate your kids financially. So very excited for the month. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions for us, info at mainsailfg.com, and we will see you next Thursday at three.